Hello folks, my name is Mark, this is Why Hit the World, how are you guys doing? And uh, this is Things I Don't Care About for January 2018. Um, haven't done a few of these in a while, so this is going to have some stories from last year. You know, um, things that I missed, things I didn't comment on, whatever. Um, so let's start off with more current news. Uh, we have this swatting incident that happened um, over uh, December. So uh, if you don't know what swatting is, it's when... Um, you call the police on someone and say there's a crisis uh, hostage situation and they send the SWAT team and the SWAT team shows up at your house and breaks your door down and stuff. And it's like a prank. It's like a, an evil version of ordering, you know, a pizza for somebody that they didn't, you know, order. <laughs> right. Except in this case, it can get people killed. And this kind of thing happens all the time, actually. Um, it's just that in this case, it resulted in someone's death. So now it's hitting the media and all that. And it's like, yeah, you know, there's really not much you can really do about it. You know, maybe the cops shouldn't react so much into uh, sending the SWAT team out right away. But what if it was in a, a real report and it was real and there really was a hostage situation and they really did need the SWAT team. So it's like. You know, is it the cop's fault for breaking down the door and shooting this guy, you know, or is it the, no, I don't think so. I think it's the fucking prankster's fault. It's the, you know, this is notorious, like, this happens a lot when, um, people get, you know, beaten in online games, <laughs> right, and they get pissed off and they want to hurt the guy that, you know, pwned him or whatever, right, and it's like, it's, it's fucking his fault. Like, the guy that called it in and they caught him. And I'd say, good, I hope they throw the book at this fucking guy. I hope this guy spends the rest of his life in prison because he basically just got a guy killed because he sucks at Call of Duty or whatever it is they were playing. That's bullshit. You know. Um, so anyway, uh, let's move on. Um, some more stuff from last year. The alt-right is triggered that the new bad guy, the bad guys in the new Wolfenstein game are Nazis, which is fucking ridiculous. That was a story from last year. If you haven't heard about this, they um, the new Wolfenstein game that came out a few months ago is an alternate reality game where the uh, United States lost World War II and the Nazis have taken over and you're like part of the resistance to like kill Nazis. And, you know, people like Richard Spencer and the other guys that listened to his ass, you know, made a big stink over this because Nazis are the bad guys, which is like, Go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Additionally, the, these same people were pissed off. It's the new Star Wars, you know, because of white genocide. You know, it's it's like the Star Wars, like they they made the uh, you know drastic decision of including um, a lead who isn't a white man, you know, and that's like somehow contributing to the to the death of the entire white race, which is bullshit. You know, here's the thing. All right, the the main character in the new Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi, is white. Okay, Ray is a white person, right? But she's a white woman, so that's not good enough. You know, it's not good enough that she's a, uh, you know, that she's white. She has to be a white man. Okay. And plus, they also put some other characters in there. Like, there's, you know, an Asian woman who, like, doesn't say, and me love you long time and stuff. And an older white woman who plays a general who, like, you know, isn't, like, super hot and is old, so you don't want to fuck her. And then those are, like, things that, they, that those offend, you know, stuff like that, you know. And also a, a black character who isn't like a thug or a gangster and, and that kind of thing. And a Latino character who's in a position of authority. You know, that that kind of thing offends neo-Nazis and, and white supremacists and shit like that. And I say good, because fuck them. Fuck them, they can suck my dick. And if you don't like it, don't watch Star Wars, alright? Because I got a message for you, Star Wars was always like that. Alright, you know, Luke Skywalker wasn't the leader of the rebellion okay princess leia was all right the rebellion was always led by a female you know woman character the whole fucking time all right lando calrissian blew up the fucking death star okay he was a main character he wasn't like you know a black token he was like instrumental to the plot and shit okay so it's like it's always been like that all right i mean the fucking empire right darth vader and the empire they're nazis they're based on nazis they're that's the bad guys in Star Wars have been Nazis. If you look, if you notice, in the original trilogy, the Empire is all basically white people. Right. Why is that? Okay, there's no aliens in there. There's no, uh, 
There's no Wookiees. There's no fucking, you know, Admiral Akbar Calamari clam people, right? There's no, there's none. All the aliens and shit, they're all in the rebellion. The, the empire is all like stormtroopers and white guys with English accents, right? And that's basically the entire fucking thing. And it's like, why is that? Because they're supposed to be symbolic of fascism, <laughs> okay? That's what they are. They're fascists. And the easiest way to identify your mind with a fascist is to invoke Nazi-type imagery. They've always... So, so if all you people out there, all you outright fucking snowflake, pathetic little trolls living in your mother's basements and shit, you know... Fuck you, <laughs> right? And if you don't like it, don't fucking watch Star Wars. Make your own version. Make alt-right Star Wars. You know, where fucking Luke Skywalker is like a, you know, shitlord and he gets trained to be a Jedi by fucking Peppy the Frog or whatever. Go do that. Uh, moving on, anyway. Um, some other shit from last year. Uh, you remember Roy Moore and how we all laughed at him when he lost? Barely lost, which was ridiculous, but anyway... Apparently, Republicans were supporting Roy Moore by buying $200 Keurig uh, coffee machines and then smashing them, <laughs> which is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my entire life. I, I wanted to actually make a video on that, but, you know, it was only in the news for two seconds because Trump and his dumbass dominates the news. And it's like, you know, you're not showing, a, a, apparently, the... the the president of the Keurig Corporation or something made an offhand remark about Roy Moore and then a bunch of Republican dumb shits went out and this is what they did and they took video of themselves smashing Keurigs and it's like, you don't really like, you know, boycott a company when you buy stuff from them just to destroy it, you know? Like maybe if you went to their, their warehouse and stole a bunch of fucking coffee machines, <laughs> that might be something. But, you know, I'm going to go buy this, you know, $200 fucking coffee machine and then smash it because I hate them. That's dumb. You're just giving them their money. It's like Keurig doesn't give a shit if you smash their machines as long as you pay for it. Fuck. I have a Keurig. It's like I swear by it. Shit. I use it every day. Thing fucking rules. Uh, moving on. Okay. Um, more stupid bullshit from last year. Uh, some flat earth idiot wanted to blast off on a homemade rocket that used fucking um, compressed air. His name was Mike Hughes. Yeah, that shit went nowhere. That was like, apparently this guy wanted to like prove that the earth is really flat. So he like built this rocket and and in the past has, has launched himself in, a, in a, a smaller version of this rocket, you know, up to like 1400 feet in the sky. And now this one is supposed to launch him like a mile up so that he can see the see the flat disk of the earth, which is like, you know, I say, go for it, man. Do it. You know, apparently his launch got uh, delayed, which is too bad. I think he should do it because he won't be coming back from that. And that's just, you know, that's natural selection at work right there. That's just going to prove that evolution is true because <laughs> this dipshit is going to take himself out of the fucking, you know, genetic breeding pool by launching himself out of a goddamn tin can <laughs> to his death. You know, if people want to do stuff like that, why stop them, you know? I never understood that. It's like, oh, this guy wants to jump the Grand Canyon on his motorbike. Yeah, dude, go. Go ahead. Do it. You know, this other guy wants to drive around without a seatbelt on at 90 miles an hour. Be my guest. Go. Dude, don't wear your fucking seatbelt. I don't see why we should, like, have to spend any money trying to stop you. You know, seriously, it's like, you know, you want to do detrimental shit to fucking kill yourself and, and you don't hurt anybody else? Be my guest. You know, you want to smoke in your house? get lung cancer, go ahead, smoke, do it, fuck, you know, I used to smoke, all right, I can't, I would be a hypocrite if I were to tell you not to smoke, you know, but I understand not smoking in a restaurant where other people around you will, like, be bothered and in inhaling your, you know, secondhand smoking shit, but you want to do it to yourself, fine, you know, you want to, like, not wear a seatbelt, that's fine, you know, uh, something else, like drinking and driving, you could potentially hurt someone, somebody else and not just kill yourself, so that you should not do, but, not wearing a seatbelt, I don't see why we, like, you know, I don't see why we find people for that. I don't see why you get a ticket. It's like, it's your own life that you're putting at risk. Be my guest. It's like jump, you know, like if you want to fly up in an airplane and jump out without a parachute, nobody should try to stop you. I, I should think that, you know, maybe, hey man, you sure you want to do that? Yes, I'm sure. All right, dude, go. That's fine with me. So this guy wants to launch himself out of a fucking rocket. You know, fuck, man. I... I'll totally see that. Anyway, 
Uh, what else we got? Um, they, uh, let's see, some, some newer news. Paul Logan goes to Japan, sees dead body, makes dumb shit video. Uh, I have never heard of Paul Logan. That's all over the, the news and, and YouTube, at least, you know, if you're a YouTube person. I never heard of this fucking guy before in my entire life. Apparently, he's like the biggest YouTube dude there is, you know, which is like, I thought that was PewDiePie, but I guess not anymore. I guess it's Paul Logan. And so uh, there's a world famous uh, forest in Japan where people go to commit suicide. And it, it's like such a problem that they have signs and shit up all the time saying, don't kill yourself, which you think that if it was really a problem, they would just build a barbed wire fence around the whole fucking thing. But, oh well. So, you know, um, this guy, Paul Logan, goes there, finds a dead body, then starts goofing off and shit, making a dumb shit video. And I'm like, whatever. You know, is, is that poor taste? Yes, that's bad. And I can see why YouTube wouldn't want that on their channel. You know, do I blame the guy? No, because this is his job. This is what he does. He goes out, he makes fucking stupid videos and clickbaity type stuff and so people see it and they go oh, I must click on this you know that's that's what this guy does all right this for me is not a job it is a hobby for me so if it was a job for me I'd probably be doing shit like that too I'd probably be doing reaction videos you know I'd probably be probably doing shit like you know watching two girls one cup or some shit and like reacting or watching the newest you know trailer to whatever movie or doing whatever dumbass challenge there is the ice bucket challenge the cinnamon challenge the fucking shove a you know shove a live fucking cat up your ass challenge whatever you know i would be doing that stuff if that was my job it's not my job and that's this guy's job that's what he does so should you get you know blame him for doing shit in poor taste when that's what his occupation is no not really um, so it's, it is a little disrespectful, I guess, and, you know, YouTube has a right to take whatever down that they feel like, so, you know, I take YouTube's side here, <laughs> right? Does this mean I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop watching Paul, you know, Paul, whatever his name is? Well, no, because I've never even fucking heard of his ass, so, who cares? Whatever, moving on. Uh, okay, getting into the, the fucking Trump news. <laughs> because, like I said, he dom I could just make this whole thing all about Trump every- I could make a video about Trump every single fucking day. It's- isn't that sad? Isn't that, like, just showing the- the state- the sad state that our- our country is in when the fucking president is, like, the stupid shit that the president does just dominates everything else, and it's like, oh, we have all this important stuff going on over here, but no, too late. Trump said something dumb. Let's put that on the news. It's like, ugh, unbelievable. Anyway, so let's see. Number one in dumbass Trump news. Trump supporters are attacking LeVar Burton because they think he's LeVar Barr, <laughs> which is, that was something from uh, about November around then. Uh, LeVar Barr is some kind of basketball player guy. I don't even know who he is. LeVar Burton is Jordy LaForge on Star Trek, <laughs> The Next Generation, or the Reading Rainbow guy, if you're not into Star Trek. And, apparently, people who vote for Trump are too fucking stupid to know the difference. So, LeVar Barr says something bad about Trump, and then they all get on Twitter and attack LeVar Burton. And it's like, you fucking idiots. That's, jeez, just, I don't know. I don't understand. I, I don't understand how you could just not read the guy's name. <laughs> all right. Unbelievable. People are fucking dumb. I don't know, man. Uh, what else do you do? Uh, last month, Trump called Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas at an event honoring Navajo code talkers. Ugh. I need some water. Ugh. So if you hadn't heard about this one, <laughs> all right, Navajo, Navajo code talkers were, they're people that during... World War II would transmit radio, you know, secrets and shit, messages back and forth. And they would do it in Navajo because that was the only language that the Japanese weren't able to crack. They couldn't understand Navajo, right? And it's 1941, there ain't no Google Translate, so, you know, so these guys were like instrumental in our victory. This was, you know, they didn't, this wasn't a small contribution. These guys, like, you know, the ability to have an unbreakable code that the Imperial Japanese were not able to 
Decipher really, you know, probably helped us win the war by leaps and bounds. Right. So there's only a few of these guys left because, you know, World War II was fucking 70 years ago, right? So these guys are in their 90s, you know. There's like a handful of them left. And, you know, every once in a while they do a, a thing to, you know, a ceremony to, to remember them and shit. Trump comes up, he starts giving this speech, and if you haven't seen it, it's the most embarrassing fucking thing. It's just so cringe-inducing. Oh my god, it's so, like, like he's, he's sitting there and he's talking, and then we have a, and he says something to the effect of, we have a Native American in Congress, we call her Pocahontas, and it's an Elizabeth Warren, and you're just, and you're, oh my god, you just, you just smack yourself in the face because you're face palming so hard. Just, ah, oh, I broke my nose. It's, it's bad. It's just, God, shut the fuck up. You know, this is our president for crying out loud. Oh my God. It's, it, it, it's on YouTube. Oh shit. My battery's dying here. Got to wrap this up. So, all right, moving on. Go watch that one before it gets buried under all the other dumbass shit that Trump's done. All right. And remember it when it comes time to vote. Uh, some other stuff, okay, um, Trump took credit for zero airline deaths in 2017, that's fucking retarded, sorry, I used the word retarded, uh, I didn't mean to, that's dumb, or whatever, that's, you know, stupid, the president has nothing to do with how many airline crashes there are, <laughs> I mean, come on, man, that's like, that's like taking credit for, like, you know, the fact that it didn't, you know, that it was just sunny weather all the time, all the time last year, it's like, Get the fuck out of here. And it's, it's a symptom of just a narcissistic personality where it's like... And also kind of shows how Trump has... You know, he kind of knows that he didn't really accomplish very much. You know, beyond his ridiculous fucking tax cut. <laughs> right? And appointing a Supreme Court guy. It's like... Yeah, all that shit was handed to you, you fucking idiot. Anyway, moving on. Um, And lastly, we have Michael Wolff's book, which... um is dominating the news cycle this week uh, called Fire and Fury. And basically, the point of Michael Wolff's book is that everybody in the White House thinks Trump is a fucking idiot, <laughs> all right? In fact, apparently Rupert Murdoch actually called him a fucking idiot, <laughs> according to this book. Um, and, you know, it's, it's so, so this is the story, all right? This guy, Michael Wolff, um, he walks up he basically got access to the um trump white house by you know because trump wanted him there to to be like a chronicler kind of thing you know like the real news as opposed to the fake news kind of thing so that he can get someone on the inside to show his perspective and apparently trump this is trump wanted this trump wanted this guy here so michael wolf got access and basically just became like an official observer and whenever these guys would be talking, he would just be on the couch, right? And the way it works in Washington, right, when you're talking to a reporter, is that you have to say if you want something on the record or not, right? And the only person who would know this would be Steve Bannon, because he was a media person. Everybody else, not so much, because they don't have any experience with this kind of thing, you know. Besides the fact that they're fucking idiots <laughs> and all of them don't have, none of them were in government before and, and you should know these things. If this is the job that you have, you should know these things. So they would just casually talk about this kind of stuff and how Trump's a fucking moron and how he's a child and all this other stuff. And apparently this guy, Michael Wolf has recordings of this. He has detailed notes. He has, you know times and places and when and where things were said and, you know, quotes and all that and actual recordings of it. And so far, no one has really denied any of the things that is in this book. There hasn't been any real denials. There was like one guy who said, yeah, it's, it's kind of taken out of context, but not really anybody else, right? And the biggest thing, you know, first off, it's, it's totally believable, okay? Because we know that certain people around Trump think that he's fucking stupid. <laughs> okay. For example, Rex Tillerson called him a moron. That that was a famous thing, you know, last year in the news that came out. But it's completely 
you know, the thing is, all right, so the people around Trump, they're not dumb. They're educated. They're, you know, all of the all of the staff members and cabinet members and Rex Tillerson, for example, is the CEO of fucking Exxon Mobil and shit. And, you know, it's like they're educated people. OK, they they understand things like tact and, and that kind of thing. And they can, you know, they, they run businesses and stuff. Right. I would say that they're pretty decently, you know, good judges of character when it comes, especially when it comes to someone's intelligence, you know, judge of somebody's intelligence. <laughs> right. I would trust them to make those types of judgments. And it doesn't surprise me at all that they would say these about him, you know, that they would say that Trump has the mentality of a fucking small child. And in fact, that seems to be the one thing that everyone in the White House says is that Trump acts like a child. He wants instant gratification right away, you know. So I don't know. I'm thinking I might go actually buy this book. And, you know, I usually kind of like, you know, I hate political fucking insider type shit like this it's boring as hell and who cares but this one sounds kind of juicy <laughs> so maybe i might actually go read this apparently it's sold out in 20 minutes at some bookstore in washington dc so that shit's funny um let's end on a, a funny story last one and uh so <laughs> the some democrats out there on twitter and liberals and, and anti-Trump people fell for a fake story where Trump supposedly watches the Gorilla Channel, <laughs> all right? Which is the funniest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. So there's a, a, a guy, a satirist, you know, named um, Pixelated Boat, and uh, he's a comedian, and he, he posts this excerpt from the book, from Michael uh, Wolf's book, but it's a fake excerpt. And paraphrasing, I'd read it, but my uh, Kindle just died right now. I'd read it, but the uh, the paraphrasing went something like this. Donald Trump is in the White House, and he wants... <laughs> He's mad because the TV is broken because it doesn't have the Gorilla Channel, which apparently is a channel that only shows 24-hour gorillas. Right. So, you know, gorilla content. So his, his staffers go... And they put together some documentaries on gorillas, <laughs> right? And they pipe it into his room so that he can watch the gorilla channel. Then he gets angry because the gorillas aren't fighting. So they <laughs> so they edit out all the, the boring parts. And all it is is gorillas fighting all day on this TV channel. And then he says Trump gets up close to the TV screen like this and says, you know, you're good, you got him good. And like, it is like talking to the screen it's hilarious and it's obviously a joke you know obviously and but people fell for it and thought the shit was real and you know i understand why it's because it sounds like the kind of fucking thing trump would do right that's what makes it so funny is that it's like you could totally picture him doing this apparently there's some there's some basis in fact for this because he's been known to do things like take movies action movies like blood sport and edit out all the talking so all it is is just fight scenes from this movie and then that's the kind of shit that he watches when he's on his private airplane and stuff so it's it's not much of a leap <laughs> to assume you know but isn't that sad isn't that really sad when you can take an obviously fake story like this right and i'm saying that that democrats fell for it democrats usually don't fall for shit like this they we democrats liberals have a very highly developed bullshit radar, especially after eight years of, you know, fake stories like this coming out about Obama, you know, Obama is a Muslim, Obama is a secret, you know, Muslim from Kenya, that's part of a plant of the Muslim Brotherhood and that kind of thing, and his wife is really a man and all this other stupid bullshit that the Republicans would post and, and say was real, which was obviously not fucking real, and things that were so ridiculous, you know, Michelle Obama is a man, but really she's really a, a gorilla, you know, shaved or whatever, and Obama's gay and all this other stuff, and he smokes crack with his friend, his gay friend, and all this, all this stuff that was just obviously fucking bullshit that the Republicans seemingly believed hook, line, and sinker, you know, you would think, and, and over the past year, 
that's like it seemed to be that that whenever a, a, another story would come out against you know that Democrats would fall for they wouldn't go for it and that was actually something that during the election you know um, that's why they always targeted Trump and Trump supporters right by putting out fake stories about Hillary because the Democrats never went for it they always would it would circulate a little bit and then it would get debunked and then after a couple of days it, that's it and it would never hit you know the big time whereas a fake story about Hillary you know Hillary Clinton is is really like you know running a pizza shop pedophile ring or some shit would circulate everywhere because Republicans never fact checked anything so I guess this kind of shows that everyone is vulnerable to this sort of fake news stuff especially when it's someone that you really really don't like you're more willing to believe that they're that they would do something like this so I guess that I guess that's just a lesson is that you know make sure you check your sources people anyway this went way too long adios